<laughs> Hello. <laughs> right, what's going on here? What's going on here? Well, we was at a boat show and Gemma signed us up for a fishing competition. <laughs> As you do. As you do. For two people who have never ever fished before, we're going to enter the biggest fishing competition in Europe. What could possibly go wrong? Right, so we need to start off by building a boat yep. that will withstand the seas of the Solent. Yep. And we also need to learn how, how to, to fish. fish. Hmm. Right, so I think, I think we start with the boat. Kay. That's what we're good at. Is that on the <laughs> So I'm just making the transom a bit lower by letting the tire letting the air out of the tires. Make getting on the off a bit easier, won't it? Alright, let's get it all stripped. So one of the biggest jobs on the little boat is the transom. Um, it's not too bad, do you know what I mean? From the outside, but it'd be nice to see what it's like on the inside. Basically a transom on a fiberglass boat like this, there's a, a layer of fiberglass on the inside, and there's a piece of plywood, and it's used like marine ply, and then there's a piece of fiberglass on the outside. That's there to take the load of the engine. So the actual, the actual physical weight of the engine sat on the transom, and also the actual, the actual thrust. So the thrust that the engine provides, so that pushes the whole boat through the water. So everything from the transom has to be like linked into the rest of the hull to actually push the boat and to carry the weight of the engine. So it's a very vital piece of piece of the boat, really. So we need to make sure this is absolutely tip top. Um, so the only way to really do it, well, there's a few holes here and there, and I'm putting my finger through. It's a bit wet at the bottom, but that's right, right in the bills. But up here, it seems pretty solid. So it's a bit like, oh, do you, should you really take it apart? But I think, I think we should. Uh, I think the actual piece of ply is about, about as high as here. Goes from side to side, and then it sort of hits some stringers down here. Then there's like a big sort of keel so I'm gonna call it right down the center inside of the hull so it all basically pushes the boat forward from this area so we need to make sure this is absolutely perfect right so I've marked all out now I've left myself room to feather the fiberglass back for when we for when we repair the damage that we caused by cutting it. So okay, I think it was definitely due for renewal. So 
even if it feels okay from the outside, obviously if you're feeling all the fiberglass, aren't you? The fiberglass is pretty thick in places, so. Right, what we need to do is get rid of all this. Uh, things to note, it was in two pieces. There's basically a joint between two pieces there, because I've been panicking about it, trying to get it in, in one piece. Um, so it does give us, give us the option of s selecting how we put it in. Um, there's all sorts of little shims and stuff, so there must have been hollows. So, even if the transom looks good from the outside, it's probably going to be, um, even if it's a little bit soft, it's, uh, it's going to be absolutely dead. So, what we learn, basically, it's well worth changing it into. And we've got a big pile of um, rotten plywood, basically. We're quite used to rotten plywood, aren't we? Right, so before, I think, before we do anything with this, we need to give it all a good jet wash, get all the it's scum and it smells a bit funny. Uh, before we do that though, we need to take the the sole out because there's seven new soles, so we may as well jet wash all the way through there underneath. So basically let's continue with the destruction before we start to make it look better. So I've cut the, the first layer of the transom because it's actually 
This is only 18 mil, but we need to make over 30 mil. I think, yeah, 30 mil. So I didn't really want to just have like a butt joint between the two sections because we can't get it all in, in one. But as you saw then, we put like a nice notch in it. Is it got a rebate? I don't know. Nice notch in it. So they're basically going to overlap. They're going to be all glued together. Okay. I'll put it offset from the center line and then the outer supply, which would be 12 mil, will be joined over here. So should make quite a nice solid piece once it's in. So before the transom goes in, um, I've cut all the floor beams to carry the marine plywood floor. But I thought I may as well link it into the transom. Because then all the forces of the engine and the, off the transom is going to get pushed right through, right through the floor, which is then spread right through the hull. So originally it had like a triangulation here. And then it went into this like sort of keelson type thing and then it was built up off this. But I thought take this all the way through that goes into the transom and I didn't want to use one I didn't want to use one massive solid piece of oak because it would be heavy and also if there's ever water inside in the bilge you want it to be able to move don't you you don't want to trap it on one side anyway um, you want it to sort of all go to the bottom so I thought I'd make a ladder so that's the ladder there so the pieces that are are inside which you've got to carry the ply they basically come out at the end here these all need cutting off now so level with 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 this piece so then the transom fits nice this will go all the way in it's just very tight um i don't want to whack it in just yet before the glue goes you know i'd rather like hit it in last thing um cool so we need to install those first and then the transom can go on But I was lucky it all fit, because I didn't want to knock it in. Because it'd be a bugger to get out, wouldn't it? But yeah, seems to fit quite nice. So then all of the load of the transom now. The engine's going to be hung here. So there's going to be a lot of twist in motion, isn't there? So all that's going to get pushed through that. And obviously through the transom. But it'll also push through like the floor, then spread to the whole hole, so. She'll have a lot of confidence in the in the back end when she's done. So we've got all of our pieces of the puzzle together now, ready to be installed. I think this is like day three now, so it'd be nice to get all this all this back together. So we're going to be epoxying it in. So we've got all of our lovely wet system. So we need to mix up plenty of that now, and then start spreading it around, and try and get it all back together.
sides whenever to get this side glued up and then we can then screw them together walk and then we can line them up perfectly and then we can get it clamped up but it's quite a rush because you don't want the epoxy to go off do you when you've got it in a big batch it can go off pretty fast You think you'd smile, wouldn't you? I was saying you'd be, be the smile. Please. Right, so my soul supports are all ready to go now. They've all been, I had to give them a quite a bit, of a bit of a sand to make them level so we can accept the, the soul boards now. Basically, they're all dry. Two pieces. All the edges are all epoxied. So it should be beautiful, shouldn't it? Holding now is a bit of a volunteer to help me pull them in. Yay! I can do that. You can do that. It sounds good, you can hear it. It sounds good. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. So, got done some sanding now, it's all pretty smooth, ready for some filler, but before I fill it, what I was thinking is like around these edges, around these edges here, this is potentially going to show fault lines, isn't it? And originally I had like this this rubbishy piece of aluminium which went round, but that's obviously off of the 80s. Um, so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is make a stainless steel strip that goes all the way round. So it's gonna go all the way round here, and then it's gonna lip just enough to co to cover this edge. So I've actually got some some scrap 316 stainless with with a a 90 degree in it. So if I cut it off along there, and then we'll see if we can make it bend round, and then um, it'll look beautiful, won't it? Obviously, we won't fit it now. We'll fit it after it's painted. But the reason I'm doing it now is so we don't damage it because um, we need to do a bit of hammering and stuff. So before we fill and paint, we'll, we'll we can give it a good hit, can't we?
Okay, so we've cut out of our piece now. Now we've got like a, an L-shaped piece. So what we're going to try and do is get it to follow the contour of there, but obviously it's not going to want to stretch. So we need to try and stretch it and make it go around. So it's basically going to involve lots of hitting and swearing and stuff. So. That's turned out quite good, hasn't it? So now it follows round now. So basically protects that lip. Obviously the engine's going here. Um, gives it a bit of bling. How are you getting on, Jim? Still sanding. Sanding, sanding, getting away all like the big lumps of silicon now on the ceiling and stuff like that. Just getting it prepped as much as I can, ready for paint. How long have you been sanding for? Feels like years. I think it's like two days though. <laughs> two days. A lot of work, still a lot to do. But it's gonna look beautiful when it's finished. So you're not filming boring sanding, are you? No, no one wants to see me sanding. Right, so we need to start thinking about where we're gonna drive from, don't we? Originally we had we had this, but this isn't gonna cut it. It's all a bit like one key. All the switches on it and stuff, but so originally this went here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build one very similar to this, but it's going to go right down to the floor, and it's going to have some like little shelves in it. So that's the plan. I'm going to stick them with it, but it's going to go all the way out here. So we're going to maximise the space. So there's the side profile. So the steering wheel's got to go here, and then switches and stuff can go along this flat panel along there. Doesn't look quite right, but I've kind of copied, copied the original. And the actual ergonomics of where the steering wheel was positioned and stuff like that was good, so we're just gonna run with that. So what I need to do now is continue right along to match the rest of the hole now. So I'm not too sure whether to leave it square or taper it off. Definitely taper it off. I think taper it off as well. But all we need to do now is leave, is leave it deep enough so we can use it as like a wire chase so we can hide the wire so we can keep the boat looking clean, don't we? Let's see how it looks. Better, isn't it? One more window to go. So while I've been doing all the woodwork out the front, so no, out the back, isn't it? At the back, Jim has been like sanding away, sanding away. She actually hasn't stopped, have you? It's been, it's not the most ideal thing to film though, is it? So, <laughs> so all these underappreciated things behind the scenes, but. <laughs> So, someone was saying to me is make it a tiny bit narrower to get further over. So I was thinking that we could hang stuff off there and stuff, but when the door opens and closes. Yes. Maybe like your handheld radio and a knife, I don't know. Yeah, you, know, like... you don't want that catching as you walk through the door, so yeah, yeah. go back a little bit. So, steering wheel's like, so we can stand up or we'll have a seat. Windscreen. And then what I want, 
is I want like some shelves down here so then I can put tackle or knives or butties butties, <laughs> butties. <laughs> just because like we it's a little boat so we haven't got many places have we to like store stuff so like two shelves maybe with a you know a lip on or a front and holes cut out like pigeonholes so much get your pigeons yeah yeah you can use them as bait <laughs> No, no, look when we go fishing, we'll actually like go to cast off and catch a seagull or something. <laughs> Little binnacle, no? Pedestal. Pedestal, I think they're called. I don't know, we can't figure these things out. Anyway, look, we've got storage here, storage here. Um, so, what we need to do now, obviously, it's marine plywood, but to make it last for a very long time, we want it to look like one piece, really. So, what we've got to do is completely soak it in epoxy, gonna fill all the voids, fill all the screw holes, and then we'll give it all the sand, and then we can put the paint on it, then, can't we? So I've spent all morning sanding and we've also been doing a bit of research about the paint that we're going to be using for the boat and there was a test that you do to see if your paint is going to react and it was get a bit of cloth on a bit of thinners, put it onto the paint that you're planning on painting over, leave it 20 seconds and if the, if the surface goes like pliable then it's going to react with the paint. So we did that, it reacted, and we then realized we needed to take it all back. So it went white, then it went a dark orange paint, and then this orange is the original gel coat. So we've happened to take all of the old paint off. So that's the reason why Simon now looks like an umpa lumpa. <laughs> umpa lumpa. <laughs> And the whole workshop <laughs> looks a, like... A lumpa lumpa. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. So it's not going to be too bad on this. Yeah, because the actual the actual white paint was fine, but where we've sanded through to the, the intermediate orange that somebody decided to paint the boat once, um, that's the one that was reacting, so yeah. take it all off. Yeah, so hopefully on the bottom we won't have to take it no. all off. Yeah, because that's just white. That's the same coat. paint. Yeah. That's the same paint as what we put on the white last time, and the white paint was fine. Yeah. But unfortunately, we've got a lot more sand in today. But it's okay. It makes the boat lighter. And the sun's out. Yeah. Woo! So we've got the doors open, so get rid of some dust. So a lighter boat is a faster boat. That's what I, that's what I say. Oh, I'll take, I'll take like. Three la two layers of paint off. Yeah. Make it lighter. Yeah. Okay. Right, Mr. Umpa Lumpa. <laughs> I'll carry on, eh? Yeah. Probably is we're running out of sanding pads. Come back next time to see what colour we decide to paint the boat and what paint we're using, because this is going to be special. Subscribe now to follow all of the Ship Happens Madness.